everyone. Welcome back. Today, we will be talking about the differences between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Bacteria are prokaryotes. They can only exist as unicellular organisms, and therefore, each cell needs to be able to protect itself. For this reason, bacteria contain cell walls. The composition of these cell walls can differ, and this is what determines if a bacterial cell is gram-positive or gram-negative. Before we get into the differences, let's briefly look at what bacterial cells are like. Bacteria lack a well-defined membrane-bound nucleus. They have a single circular chromosome carrying all the genes they need for basic survival. This single circular chromosome is located in a place in the cell called the nucleoid. They can contain plasmids as well. These are extra chromosomal genetic materials. These confer additional advantages to the cell. They are physically separate from the cell's main genetic material and can replicate on their own. Bacterial cells also don't have membrane-bound organelles. They come in many shapes and sizes. They have a cell wall. They have a cell membrane, also known as a plasma membrane, which is made of phospholipids, similar to that of eukaryotic cells. Both the cell wall and the cell membrane are referred to as the envelope. Some bacteria have another outer covering called the capsule. This is made of long chains of carbohydrates. Now that we briefly reviewed what bacteria cells are like, let's start talking about their cell walls and gram staining. Bacteria contain two main types of cell walls. The differences in these cell walls lies in the composition of them. This difference is what we use to categorize bacterial cells into the gram-positive and gram-negative categories. The technique that helps us to identify these differences is called gram-staining. This technique includes a series of staining and decolorization steps. The end result would be one of two colors deep purple or pinkish red. The process of gram staining. The American Society for Microbiology states that gram staining requires four basic steps. They include adding a primary stain, this is called the crystal violet, to a heat fixed smear, adding a mordant called grams iodine, rapid decolorization with alcohol, acetone, or a mixture of alcohol and acetone, and counter staining with safranin. Depending on the color of the cell, they will be classified as gram-positive or gram-negative. If the color is deep purple, then the cell is gram-positive. This means that the cell wall absorbed the crystal violet. If the cell is pink red, then it is gram negative. This means that the cell did not absorb the crystal violet, but it absorbed the safranin. The difference between the two types of cell walls. Gram positive bacterial cells. Gram positive bacterial cells contain a thick layer of peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan is also called murine. It is made of sugars and amino acids and is found outside the plasma membrane. As you can remember, this is where the cell wall lies, as discussed before. Gram-positive cells also contain lipotechoic acid. These are anchored in the cell membrane and their structure can vary between different gram-positive bacteria. Lipotechoic acids behave as regulatory molecules and have antigenic properties. Therefore, they can stimulate specific immune responses activating the human immune system when exposed. Gram-negative bacterial cells. Gram-negative bacterial cells contain a thin layer of peptidoglycan and therefore contains a thin cell wall. However, 
these cells contain a third layer on top of the cell membrane and the cell wall. The outer membrane is made of phospholipids and lipopolysaccharides. These lipopolysaccharides are the items that trigger the immune response in the human bodies. Interestingly, the immune response to lipopolysaccharides in gram-negative bacteria is much greater than the response to lipotechoic acids found in gram-positive bacteria. Both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria are pathogenic. This is because their cell walls contain toxic components that can cause disease. They play a central role in the pathogenesis of bacterial septic shock in humans. This is a lethal condition that involves the collapse of the circulatory system and causes multiple organ failures. However, gram-negative bacteria are considered to be the primary pathogens because their unique structure allows them to be resistant to treatment such as antibiotics compared to gram-positive bacteria. That's it for this video. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a like and subscribe. That really helps out the channel. See you in the next video. Bye.